Please rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Lee just read for you. I share with you today at verse 13. Jesus laid his hands on the woman, and immediately she straightened up, and she thanked God. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever wondered what it might be like to trade lives with someone else? Back in 1976, there was a movie called Freaky Friday, where a mother and her daughter, they woke up one morning and they traded lives. Yeah, the mother was living the life of the daughter and the daughter was living the life of the mother. Well, that must have been something, right? Now, I know it's physically impossible for that to happen, but it is something that we might want to think about. What would it be like to trade lives with someone? What would it be like if you traded lives with people who had been in a wheelchair their entire lives? What would it have been like when they were a child in school? What struggles did they have? Or what was it like when they weren't able to do ordinary things that most people could do? Or what would it be like if you traded lives with a homeless woman? Where would your next meal come from? Would you ever feel safe? Well, I wonder what it would have been like to trade lives with this crippled woman in the Word of God before us today. The Bible tells us on a worship day, Jesus was teaching in church. And there was a woman there who had been crippled for 18 years. She was bent over and she couldn't straighten up. Now, think about that. 18 years, this woman was crippled, was bent over. 18 years, she wasn't able to straighten up. What would you say to her? Would you ask her, what do you miss most about your former life? Would you ask, what can people do to help you? Or, what do you wish people understood about you? The Bible then continues here. When Jesus saw this woman, he called her to come forward. Now think about that for a minute. What would you think if I asked you to get up and come forward to the altar right now? Would you jump up and have a big smile on your face and come running up here? Or would you slump down in your seat and try not to make any eye contact with me? Most people, they don't ever want to be asked to come forward. They don't ever want to come up front, right? So put yourself in this woman's shoes. What must she have felt? Who is this man? What does he want with me? You know, I would want to ask her what she was expecting from Jesus. And let me begin here. When you came to know Jesus, what did you expect? What did you expect from Jesus in your life? Did you expect anything at all? Now, I'm so glad each of you are here today. And I, I pray that you feel welcomed and loved and accepted here today. Now, I certainly don't know everything about you. I don't know what problems and troubles you might be going through in your life. I don't know all those. And certainly, I don't know what you expected when you came here to church today. Maybe you expected me to make you feel guilty about some sin you committed this past week. Maybe you expected me to give you some inspiration for your life. Maybe you expected me to bring you some comfort 
in your life. Or maybe like this crippled woman in the Word of God here before us today, you didn't expect much of anything from me. Now, she was crippled for 18 years. Some of you maybe have gone through troubles or problems for that long or more. She certainly didn't expect much from Jesus, and maybe you're not expecting that much from Jesus either. There was a man named John Patterson who grew up in a church where the pastor kept talking about an angry and a punishing God. And so as he grew up, he grew up to hate God. He didn't want to have anything to do with God. One day, though, his life was changed when he went to church with a friend. This time when he went to church, he heard about the love of God. He heard about the mercy and the compassion of God, and it changed his life. John says, I was surprised by what I heard. I was overwhelmed. I asked God to forgive me for my anger against him in the past, and I asked him to help me to do something for him. I wanted to do something for God. One year later, John was scheduled for a heart transplant. The night before his surgery, the doctor came in and said, John, would you be willing to give up this heart that you're scheduled to have for a 17-year-old boy who is dying? Wow. What a tough question. Now, John knew that Jesus died and rose for him. He knew his sins were forgiven. He knew that he was going to be in heaven no matter what. And so, amazingly, John told the doctor, yes, that let the 17-year-old boy have the heart that I was supposed to get. Now, the good news here is that one week later, John received a new heart. It's hard to find a place in the Bible where people actually got what they expected from Jesus. Most every person who met Jesus left him feeling surprised or overjoyed or changed in some way. When you read about Jesus here in the Bible, you'll find that Jesus was always looking to change people's lives through his love and through his healing for them. So that brings me back to this crippled woman here today. Jesus said to this woman, you are free from being crippled. Jesus then put his hands on her and she straightened up and she thanked God. That brings me to the second thing that I want to say to you today. When you came to know Jesus, how did the world look different to you? Anyone who's been set free from their sins knows about thanking God. Anyone who's been set free from the fear of dying knows about thanking God. The Bible here just gives one sentence to show how things were different for this woman. She straightened up and she thanked God. Dr. Sanduk Ruit is a doctor in Nepal. He has performed cataract surgeries on over 100,000 people there. He says, after the surgery, when I take the bandages off of the people's eyes, they squint, they look at their hands, then they look down at their feet. Then they start to look around them. They look around at people's faces and at buildings and at the sky. And then they all get this ecstatic smile on their face. And when they leave me, they're walking upright and they're beaming and proud. Isn't that great? Well, don't you think that this crippled woman here 
felt the same way? She had to have a great smile on her face. She was probably beaming. She could stand up straight again. The sad part here is we don't know anything more about this woman. The Bible doesn't tell us anything more about her. What did she do with the rest of her life? Well, that leads me to the third thing I want to share with you today. When you came to know Jesus, what did you do with the rest of your life? Now that Jesus has forgiven all of your sins, now that Jesus has taken away your fear of dying, now that Jesus has assured you that you're going to have eternal life with him in heaven, what are you doing with your life? Are you thanking God every day? Are you using your life to thank God? Are you telling people around you this great news about Jesus? Are you doing things to show your love for God and for others around you? In January of 2007, a young woman by the name of Shannon Christian was brutally murdered. Her father, Gary Christian, he was a Christian at the time, but after what happened here, Gary said, God, I'm done with you. I don't want anything more to do with you at all. Ten years later, Gary was invited by a friend to go to church with him. He really didn't want to go, but he reluctantly went. The pastor that day talked about Peter's denial of Jesus. Remember three times he said he didn't know who Jesus was. And then he talked about after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus forgave him and he restored him back to his ministry. After the service was over, Gary went to the cemetery where his daughter, Shannon had been buried. He fell to the ground and he said, God, what you did to Peter years ago, do to me today. Forgive me for leaving you. Gary left that cemetery feeling forgiven. He left the cemetery feeling restored again. He now tells people around him all about Jesus. Gary says, if just one person gets to heaven through my sharing, then it is all worth it. I pray that after you leave the service today, after you have met Jesus again today, that you'll feel different. Jesus came to this earth for people like this crippled woman years ago, and today, Jesus came to this earth just for you. Through your trust in Jesus, Jesus has forgiven all of your sins. Through your trust in Jesus, Jesus has assured you of an eternal life with him in heaven no matter what. Thank Jesus again for that today. And then use the rest of your life to show your thanks for Jesus. Let other people know about him. Share the love of Jesus with them. If just one person gets to heaven through your sharing, then it's all worth it. God bless you. Amen.